In this video, I will be attempting to survive 100 days in the Everglades in Hardcore Minecraft. This means I'll have to survive the extreme weather, aggressive mobs, and, because it's my Halloween special, some myths and urban legends. All while I explore the Everglades and build myself a base for survival. With that being said, let's get into the video. I spawned in and took a look around me, only to see this guy here. Oh, hi there. Yeah? Can I... can I eat you? Things soon turned ugly though, as I knew I would need food, and he would be much easier to kill than an alligator. Speaking of which, I heard a hiss. Oh, that, I heard a hiss. I, what, what was that? So I turned around to investigate it, and quickly got back to work. After picking up the bird meat, I then went to collect blocks. Only this happened. Ooh! Okay! 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 Ooh! Hoo hoo! That's not what you want to see coming out of the, the grass right at you. With all that aside, I went to collect some wood from this nearby forest. I also got this weird advancement that I've never seen before. But regardless, I now had an objective. And that was to get a bed crafted before night. So I went out to find some wool, or rather a structure containing wool, as there are no sheep in the Everglades. But you know what there is? Alligators, and crocodiles too. That's why I towered up when I saw that I was near water. And that was a good call. There are much better places to be opening your mouth. While I was up here, I went ahead and crafted a wooden pickaxe. Only then, this crocodile got aggressive. Okay, okay. Okay. After thinking for a second, I decided that there was only one way to escape. I crafted this boat, and then went for it. Okay, we're good, we're good. As I rode away, I spotted another crocodile nearby. So I just decided to leave the pond and head for a forest. And as the sun began to set, I entered this cypress forest. So I got some wood and dug down, and as I did, a strange noise surrounded me. Yeah, no idea what this was, but I got some iron and coal anyways. As the sun rose on day two, I peeked out of my burrow and finally left it. I then crafted some shears and collected some leaves, which I crafted this leaf armor with. Now it was time for me to continue looking for wool, but I was definitely cautious as I walked along the tall grass. After a while, I decided to build up and take a look around. And that's when I saw this. A building. And upon approaching this building, I figured out where I was. An Inga Trail is one of the Everglades' most popular trails, as it includes a walkway over the nearby Taylor Slough, a marshy waterway where wildlife is abundant. Here you can see alligators, turtles, birds, and many other animals as you walk along the South Floridian atmosphere. Now before we continue with this video, I just wanted to say Happy Halloween! Boo. Yeah, I know. Scary. Anyways, this is my Halloween special, and so that means that I will be talking about some myths and urban legends that occur in the Everglades. With that being said, I do dive into some darker things that I normally cover on this channel, the worst of which being a serial killer, but this is Minecraft, so I cover it in a light way and an appropriate way as well. But if you don't like that kind of content, then you might want to skip this one. Now before we move on, I do have one more thing that I want to talk about. Florida has been hit hard by Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton, the former of which is the reason I had to push this video back, but I at least still have my apartment. So yeah, I am lucky. But with that being said, the first link in the description is going to be to a fundraiser of some kind to help people who are affected by the hurricanes down in Florida. So of course, donate if you can, but otherwise, I hope you enjoy the video. And so, with that being said, let's get back to it. I got some water from this pond before exploring the visitor center. This is giving me like slight backroomsy vibes. Soon enough, I found exactly what I was looking for. So I crafted a bed, and explored the rest of the buildings. 
And yeah, there wasn't any loot at all. So instead, I decided to take a walk along the trail. Next morning, I continued along the trail, before deciding that it was time for me to find a spot for my base. So I got in my boat and rode around. It wasn't long until I found this spot here. So I started work on my base, and this time, I was planning on making two connected cabins with a Halloween vibe. So I cleared out the area and made the outlines, before witnessing a rather eerie sunset in the forest. That is creepy. That is really creepy. Next morning, I continued work on my base. And so, while I finish up these floors, let me tell you what my goal for this episode is. See, the Everglades are known for biodiversity. And so, in this episode, I'll be visiting some of the best places that the Everglades has to offer. All while finding a specific animal in each place. The first location on my list is Shark River Slough. And the animal I'll be finding there is the Bull Shark. But before I make my way over there, I want to do some building. I finished up the floors, and went out to find some darker wood. And after a bit of searching, I found spruce. On day 5, I headed back to the base and almost ran into this snake on the way. I made it home and continued my work. Which led me to finishing up the outlines. Meaning that, on day 6, it was time for me to set off. I knew that I would have to go northwest to reach the slough, which meant that I would have to go through the forest. Yeah, I wasn't enjoying this, especially as I thought I saw something move. Regardless, I turned myself into a lawnmower in order to avoid the berry bushes. And after a lot of walking, I spotted something that evening. Is that a watchtower? What was that? What? Wait a minute. As it turns out, I had found one of the most elusive animals of the Florida Everglades, but I'll talk more on them later. For now, I had to survive, and so when one of them got aggressive... Oh, okay, okay. I ran for the tower. I made a mistake, I made a mistake, I made a, a severe lapse in judgment. It's my favorite YouTuber. Apology, okay. I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go, I'm just... Okay, okay. Once I made it to the top, I took a look around and checked this chest, which had some fine loot. I then looked out into the forest. Next morning, I collected my things from the tower and continued on. This time, I went around the forest. Only this brought me to an area I had already been, an area that I knew had some dangerous wildlife. And after spotting the same crocodile from earlier, I got some water and just headed back for the forest. And that night, I deeply regretted that decision. That's creepy. This is all just... Alright, we're, we're just, we're just gonna go to sleep. Next morning, the eyes weren't there, because of course they weren't. Either way, I kept moving as the slough was a bit further than I had thought. This became apparent as I reached a watery cypress forest, and inside the forest, there was definitely some wildlife. So I did the boat maneuver from earlier and started rowing through the forest, and the scenery was genuinely unlike anything I've seen in this series yet. That evening, I found this cabin. Upon entering it, I found a rather spooky sight inside. On day 9, I finished looting the cabin, despite not finding anything good, and then I continued onward through the watery forest. After a good bit of travel, I finally reached a sandier area, and right ahead was some water. And sure enough, I had reached the slough.
Shark River Slough is an essential channel of fresh water that reaches all the way down to the Florida Bay. Yeah, this marshy water is huge, and at some points, it's deep enough to host one of the most dangerous maritime predators, the bull shark. These sharks are able to make their way up into the Everglades due to the fact that they can survive in both saltwater and freshwater, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they are among the most aggressive of sharks. I rode my way through the slough, all the while looking out for the infamous bull sharks. I didn't have much luck though, as the sun began to set, and I made camp. Next morning I headed back out into the slough on the hunt for the sharks. I finally made my way downstream and even climbed some mangroves to get a better view, but still no luck. That is, until I saw one in the distant murky waters, and then this turtle gave me a jump scare. Anyways, it was time for me to head home, as I had some base work to do and I didn't want to get near the bull sharks. Only that night, my travels were interrupted. The next morning I woke to poison being splashed on me by this witch. Yeah, what a lovely way to wake up. Of course, I now had to head into the cypress forest to get away, which is right where I had seen the creature. I took a moment to look around the forest, but yeah, nothing at all. So I just continued on, reaching the cabin by early afternoon. I took a few more things from the cabin before noticing this door that I had somehow missed. Yeah, daha, very funny. Very, very Halloween. Phil jump scares aside, I dismantled this armor stand and left, making it to this marshy area by sunset. After a bit more travel, I made it home. And you know what? It's time to do some proper building. I focused my efforts on this one cabin and built it up before starting on the roof the next day. My base building was met with some light rain, but as I ran out of mangrove wood, I knew that I would have to put the roof work on hold. But that was alright, because I would be able to get some more at my next location, which would be the Florida Bay, where I would be finding a flamingo. I finished up day 13 by getting some jungle wood. I then worked on the interior the next day, and started on the second floor. I took a look through all of the craftable Halloween decorations, and knew that I absolutely had to make some of these. I just didn't have the materials yet. Regardless, I fixed a few things on day 15, before deciding that it was time for me to set off. So I got in my boat and started rowing south, as my plan was to take Taylor Slough south and filter out into the bay. With that being said, I ended up reaching some deeper waters by that afternoon, and these waters were very much inhabited. But that didn't really matter, as a storm was about to arrive. The Everglades houses frequent storms, whether they be powerful surges or just afternoon thunderstorms. And it seemed like I was rowing through the latter, as by the time I reached the mangrove forest, the storm was already over with. I also noticed that I hadn't seen the glowing eyes for quite some time, but that thought soon left my mind as I heard seagulls. And the presence of shark fins in the distance confirmed my location. I had reached the bay. Florida Bay is a shallow body of water that separates the Everglades and the Keys. And by shallow, I mean 4-5 to five feet deep on average. That definitely helps give it this vibrant blue look, but contrasting with that bright blue is a shrimp scented pink. Flamingos actually get their color from the shrimp that they eat, and in order to keep warm from the ocean breeze, they'll often stand on one leg, and can even sleep like this. But I had yet to even spot any. Instead, I caught this sunset. The next day I went out to find flamingos. I decided to search these mangrove islands nearby, but upon doing so, I saw a large structure. It was a fort, only a pillager fort. So I went in and quickly destroyed this spawner at the price of getting hit. I was able to kill both of them before then hearing a pillager noise that I didn't quite recognize. 
I looked around the buildings and destroyed this other spawner, and collected some chains from my base. But that's when I saw this new type of pillager that I hadn't seen before. Instead of engaging with it, I went and collected these hay bales and this pumpkin. Then I went to slowly approach it, but that's when a horde of them emerged. So I boarded myself in this room as they surrounded me. And this is when I came up with a plan. I snuck out and got this sand, before then using it to suffocate them. I then climbed up the side of the tower, and after locating the spawner, I destroyed it from below. I towered up again the next morning, but as they came after me, they all ended up falling. All but one, that is. I took care of this one myself, though. And yeah, the loot inside was pretty good. I jumped back in the bay and continued my search for flamingos. I did run into these coral snakes, which, by the way, are very dangerous. Regardless, I headed back towards the shore. And I ended up rowing over some more sharks. Soon enough, though, I had found what I was looking for. I looked through this flamboyance of flamingos before abducting one and rowing away. Yeah, this is going to be my companion now. The sun soon set on the bay. And as I rowed, I spotted something in the distance. I came to the realization that I was witnessing the subject of one of the most famous ghost stories of the Everglades. The ghost ship of the Everglades is said to be a ghastly apparition of a pirate ship that was once stranded in these waters. Legend has it that this ship is stuck to sail for an eternity, as its ill-fated crew search for a way out of the shallow grassy waters. The tale itself goes back centuries, with some reports claiming it to be from the 1700s. But regardless, no one has ever tried to approach... Well, okay. I guess there I go. I rode my way towards the ship, but because I could see through it, I saw that it had nothing inside it. So I just took another look, before continuing on. Next day, it was time for me to head back with Luna. And yes, that is now the name of my flamingo. We made our way into the grassy waterways, and I stopped to get some mangrove wood. I made a shield while I was at it, and then continued up Taylor Slough. Luna seemed to be having fun, and we ended up making a pretty good distance. But our good fortune was about to change. It was here again. And this time, its eyes were red. It almost hit Luna, so I got in the boat and continued rowing. That's when it came into the water, and began wading towards me. Luckily for me, my boat was faster. And I was able to get away. Yeah, I am no longer letting my guard down. The next morning, we reached Anhinga. I stopped here so I could craft a knife, get some straw, and then craft a lead for Luna, as we were going to walk home from here. But I was very careful, as I knew crocodiles and alligators could be anywhere. We ended up making it home the next morning, and after attaching Luna to this fence post, I went to get some more spruce. And now it was time to do some more base work. I ended up finishing most of the roof today, and I was really liking my progress. The next day I continued on the roof, and finished the second floor. I also made this balcony for my bridge that I was going to add. And on day 23, I wanted to do some interior work. But in order to make Halloween decorations, I needed this table saw. So I got the materials I needed and crafted it. I ended up making this hay wreath. But when I saw I could craft these leaf carpets, well, I made a lot of them. I finished off the day by placing them all around my base. Knowing that tomorrow, I would be ready for my next location. See, for this next one, I will be heading just north of the Everglades, where I will find the Big Cypress National Preserve. And here, I will be looking for the Florida Black Bear. I woke the next morning and decided not to take Luna on this trip. Yeah, it didn't seem like a good idea to find a black bear with her. So I set off again. Now the preserve is pretty far away, so I plan on heading south and across the Florida Bay again. 
before coming back up this way. And yeah, this took a while. In fact, the next few days were just a lot of rowing. I saw another swarm of friendly reptiles, and at one point, I even got bitten by this snake. Yeah, this left me at half a heart. But after healing up, I continued on my way, and eventually started going up the coast. Which is why I decided to check this waterway on day 30. I was hoping that it led to land, and as I rode along it, I got genuinely jump scared by these two fireflies because they looked just like the glowing eyes. Yeah, I felt pretty silly after that, but soon enough, I had a legitimate reason to be concerned. So I happily turned around and checked another waterway. As I rode along this one, I noticed that it led much further inland. Only I then saw a break in the trees, so I went to take a look. And at first glance, this looked like any other camping spot in the Everglades. But I soon realized where I was. Edgar Watson was a notorious serial killer who had a sugarcane syrup business here in the Everglades in the 19th century. And when his workers asked to be paid, well, they were never heard from again. After years of violence, he met his end by an angry mob who confronted him. And today, all that's left behind is some of his farm equipment, like this cistern. However, I was more interested in the barrels nearby, which ended up containing a lot of helpful loot, like this flashlight, and this armor. And using the flashlight was, well, definitely eerie. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. The next morning, I rode along the mangroves. That is, until I saw this mangrove tunnel. So, I entered it. And upon doing so, I landed in this marshy area where I saw a chimney in the distance. House. I approached the house, but soon regretted that decision. Ooh, okay. I quickly ran back to the water and then healed up, before deciding to go by treetop. As I bridged over to the house, I saw many gators below me. And of course, that's when it started storming. The loot here was fine, as it was mostly just wool, but I did find a lot of food above the fireplace. Regardless, I stayed in this house, in order to wait out the storm. And on day 32, the storm had finished. This meant it was time for me to make my escape back over the bridge, and then finally look for an exit to the mainland. But I was interrupted by a certain someone. Hey, you want to come on up, bud? Come on up. Hey, you want to purr into the mic? Yes, Valentino decided to join me on this expedition, and just as well, because not much happened for the rest of the day. But on day 33, I noticed that I was definitely heading inland due to the abundance of pine trees around me. However, that's when I spotted this tour boat. It was very much abandoned, but the loot was definitely interesting. Cobweb on a stick. Helium flamingo. It allows the wearer to swim in the air for a limited period of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. After messing with my flamingo float, I looked at the rest of the loot. Night vision goggles, that just can't. Yeah, I hate this. Spider hysteria? What? Okay. I tried the spider eye punch, but it didn't actually give me hysteria, so I'm guessing I was just lucky. Regardless, I continued on my way and was now finally on land. But the next morning, I realized that I needed to stop and craft some new leaf armor, so I went to mine some iron when I found this. I'm genuinely not joking, this is the biggest vein of iron I've ever seen in this game. Yeah, I mined it all, and needless to say, I was able to craft that leaf armor and an iron axe. On day 35, I found myself in a big open field, 
and in the distance, a forest came into view. Soon enough, I realized that this was the preserve. The Big Cypress National Preserve is found west of Miami and just north of the Everglades. Here you can see a wide array of wildlife, including the invasive Burmese python, which are now found throughout the Everglades as well, and they're causing a lot of harm to the native wildlife. However, someone who isn't as invasive is this guy, the Florida black bear. These are the only bears found in Florida, and they can be found here in the preserve, where the FWC estimates a population of around 4,000 of them live in the entire state. And so I went to try and find one of them, but I soon found something else instead. See, that, that just can't be good, can it? My forensics analysis here is that he was running, right? He's running. And then he tripped over this button. He fell. And then he, uh... Well, he... He projectile... Is that what this is? Just by that noise, I can deduct that yes, it is. I don't... I don't even want to pick that up. That's disgusting. That's so gross. Can I pick you up? Okay. Uh... I don't really want these, so I'll just... I'll, I'll give you a proper burial. Yeah, there we go. And I'll leave you a little tombstone. There you go. Perfect. Okay. The next day, I searched through the forest, and walked around the edge of it to try and find a bear. But it wasn't until I started building up that I actually heard something. It seems as though I had found some black bears, and they were, well, sleeping on the water. Yeah, just like that bear in Norway. I quickly rode away and then healed back up, before then deciding that it was about time for me to head home now. I went along the forest in the direction of my base, and this time I would be going by foot. And that brings me to day 37, where I walked through this pine forest and headed towards the Shark River Slough. Only I couldn't help but notice that this walk was incredibly scenic. On the evening of day 38, I found myself in this open field. I decided to continue into the night until I found water. But yeah, it was very eerie. And then it got worse, as I saw red lights in the distance. But it wasn't until I towered up that I saw it. Yeah, it was time for me to run. Only now mobs are spawning all around me. And these spiders were doing some serious damage. I was low. And I had to keep moving, so that's just what I did. Until finally, I was able to sleep. The next morning, I continued out through the marsh. And yeah, at this point, I just wanted to get home. As I approached this forest ahead of me, I realized that there's actually a river in front of it. So I made new leaf armor and healed up some, before following the waterways. I continued along them for quite some time, that is, until I stopped to craft a campfire, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. After crafting it, I kept on my way, only to see another glimpse of a very elusive animal. Soon enough though, I pulled over, as the moon started to come out, and that means that it's time for a campfire story. Now this is a segment that I plan on doing in every Halloween special where I cover a scary legend that I wasn't able to make for the video. And so, with that being said, let's talk about the Owl Witches of the Everglades. Long before the Spanish claimed Florida as their own, Native Americans inhabited the Everglades. The Seminole people are among the most well-known, and they told stories of the Seguini, or Owl Witches. These are violent and evil creatures that look human by day, but 
turn into tall, ravenous beasts that resemble owls at night. Now, according to nativelanguages.org, some communities take it more seriously than others, but it remains as an ancient myth that stalks the Everglades. Campfire stories aside though, I woke up the next morning and put out my campfire, which is a very important thing to do. The National Park Services will be on your good side. Either way, I then set off for my home, and it took a couple of days to get there. Yeah, not much really happened other than me finally seeing a bull shark up close, but I eventually made it home and said hi to Luna. Before starting on some home improvements. And so on day 44, I started on the second floor of the other cabin and made the other bridge platform. Oh, and this next location won't exactly be a location. No, I decided that I was rather tired of this creature hunting me, so I was going to hunt it next. Regardless, I got some spruce and started on the interior the next morning. I made and placed a lot of Halloween decorations, including this cool little pumpkin lantern. But the next morning, I got ready to go hunting. I crafted some iron armor and cooked some food before setting off to find this creature. Now, I did know that I would have to wait until nightfall, so when I made it to Anhinga, I decided to just stay here as I thought this would be the perfect place to fight it. And just like that, the sun set and the boardwalk went dark. I walked along the boardwalk as the night progressed, but nothing happened, and eventually I gave up. So when I awoke on day 47, I headed for a forest, as I figured that maybe it only shows up in the forests. So I made my way towards Shark River Slough and used my flamingo float to travel some. Soon enough I reached this pine forest, and once again the sun began to set. Only this time, the sunset was met with silence. I waded my way through this pond, and the abundance of spider eyes made it difficult for me to tell if the creature was here. But after using my flamingo float again, its presence was confirmed. And it started to attack. It actually ended up hitting me this time and doing a decent amount of damage. So I tried to heal, but it then made its way into the pond. However, I was able to land one shot on it. But this just confirmed that, much like the Wendigo in Alaska, this creature probably won't be killable. But after quite some time of dodging and shooting, the only thing that could help me had arrived. And just like I predicted, the sun made it vanish. It was then clear to me just what I was dealing with. The Skunk Ape is a well-known cryptid that supposedly lurks in the Florida Everglades. Since the mid-20th century, there have been hundreds of reports of this Bigfoot-adjacent creature that has a terrible smell and, according to some people, glowing red eyes. Now, I did use a Bigfoot mod as a base for this creature, as they are very similar, with the main difference being that the Skunk Ape has longer reddish-brown hair. Now, the date of the first sighting is disputed, with some considering the 1818 reports of a man-sized monkey in Apalachicola to be the very first recorded sightings. Either way, all I know is that there's something strange in the Florida Everglades. I went home the next morning and got ready to head to my next location, which is Whitewater Bay, where I will be finding the American Alligator. And while alligators can certainly be dangerous, I decided that I might as well just bring Luna on this one, but she'll just have to be ready for a lot of walking. So we began our trip and headed out parallel to the forests. But as we reached water on day 49, I made sure to keep Luna close by, and I realized that this was a good call, as I had just spotted a croc nearby. But we just kept walking, and made it to the forest that night. 
Next morning I woke up and realized that it was already day 50. Normally I like to take this day to say thanks for watching this far into the video. And if you like it so far, why not subscribe? My goal as a channel is to encourage travel and show people that the world can be a really amazing place. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you should definitely subscribe. Anyways, the comment who guessed the location first was Brian Konopka. And this is your second time guessing it. So this time you win, uh, you, you win the skunk ape. Yes, a skunk ape is currently on the way, so just be ready for that. But with that being said, back to the video. I rode along this mangrove forest the next day and didn't see much of anything. That is, until I made my way into a much wider area where I saw lots of alligators. But as I took Luna further into these open waters the next morning, I realized that it wasn't just a wide channel. We were in the bay. Whitewater Bay is a large body of water that's almost completely surrounded by mangrove forests. Apparently, it's very easy to get lost in this bay due to both its size and abundance of repetitive mangrove trees. But under the water, things are very different. Thanks to its mixture of saltwater and freshwater, the bay can host bottlenose dolphins, and of course, the American alligator. The American alligator is a very common sight in the Florida Everglades, as they thrive in marshy and swampy environments. And, believe it or not, these guys almost went extinct, but due to conservation efforts, they are now no longer a concern. The American alligator is truly an example of how conservation can save a species. But still exercise caution around these animals, as they can be deadly. This mob was made by the very talented Steve Locks, and as always, you can find it in the description. I cautiously rode around with Luna, but we just ended up spotting this structure. It looks like an upgraded witch hut or something, and the loot was, well, non-existent. However, as I went to leave, I noticed that there were many gators now circling the area. This is when I decided that it was a mistake to bring Luna. But I got to the boat and just kept going. Next day, I figured that I should go ahead and try to reach my next location while I was over here. And that is the Ponce de Leon Bay, where I will find the West Indian manatee. But a sudden storm had other plans. Yeah, this was a pretty bad storm, so I pulled over and took cover in these mangrove trees. After a while of waiting, I noticed this gator was approaching. And then it went right below Luna. So I went to take a closer look. Yeah, I swam away fast, and my flamingo flute ended up saving me. But now I was stuck in the middle of gator-infested waters in a storm. Yeah, not great. After a moment of panic, I swam right back to Luna. And soon enough, I had made it back onto land. Not much happened on day 54, as the storm had cleared, and I rode Luna west in the direction of bay number two. I was definitely looking forward to seeing the manatees, as I think manatees are just fun animals. Regardless, we kept rowing, but on the evening of day 55, I spotted a familiar and ghostly ship. Next morning, I knew I had to be getting close, but our travels came to a halt when I saw this gator directly blocking our path. So I got out and carefully started to lead it away. I saw some other gators in the distance, but after a bit of skillful swimming, I was able to get back into the boat and we just kept going. The environment around us started to change as I heard seagulls and waves crashing in the distance. And when I saw some manatees nearby, I knew I had filtered out into the ocean and reached the other bay. Ponce de Leon Bay is a waterway connecting the brackish Everglades water to the saltier waters in the Gulf of Mexico. 
This bay isn't anything too special, but I wanted to cover it because the man this bay is named after. Juan Ponce de Leon was a Spanish explorer who not only started the Spanish settlements in Puerto Rico, but also is credited for discovering Florida. Now there is evidence that suggests he wasn't the first European to discover the 27th state, and of course it very much already had inhabitants, but Ponce de Leon did definitively name Florida. Now as for our maritime mammals, manatees, or sea cows, are intelligent and heavy herbivores. Not only can they weigh up to 1,200 pounds, but they can also spend up to 12 hours a day sleeping. I swam with the manatees for a bit before spotting the shipwreck nearby, and even though the loot was bad, I couldn't complain. I was having a good time, but I knew that I had to get home again, as there are still more things to see. And so with that in mind, I set off and started my very long and frustrating travel home. But with all of that out of the way, it's time for some much needed home improvement. And yeah, I'm going to do some proper base work, because I probably won't be back until it's time for base review on day 99. So I finished this roof trim, and ended up having to craft a new bed, since I had apparently forgotten mine. But the next morning, I went out to get some spruce, and after seeing lots of gators, I worked on the roof of this cabin, and its second floor. On day 65, I worked exclusively on this bridge. I connected both ends, before then starting on the decorations around it. And that continued into the next morning. And while I work on my bridge, I'll go ahead and tell you where my next location is. And that is a hardwood hammock, where I will find the Florida Panther. I did more bridge work before completely finishing this roof, but I wasn't loving the bridge just yet. So the next morning, I got a ton of wood and fences, before applying them all to the bridge. And yeah, I still didn't love it. So I went back to get spruce for the third time, and I decided that this was my last day of base work. But I wanted that bridge to look good, so I placed these barrels under the bridge and started on my room. And by the end of the day, I thought the bridge looked fine. Hopefully the vines will grow out while I'm gone. Speaking of which, I woke up the next morning and headed out, opting not to take Luna on this one. I worked my way east, knowing that the challenge here will be finding the panther rather than the hammock. Either way, I rode past Anhinga and stopped to heal up. This gave me the great idea to see if this gator could attack me while I was on land. I deserve this. Soon enough, I found a hardwood hammock. But no panther. Plus, I started overheating, and had to jump in the gator water to cool off. And coincidentally, I cooled off right as an evening rainstorm began. And honestly, this was one of my favorite moments yet. Next morning, I found this structure ahead of me. Naturally, I approached it, but then realized that I had left my pickaxe at my base. So I broke the stone and then the spawner inside, both with my fist. And while I did get hit once by this husk, I quickly killed it and took a look at the loot. Which was fine, I guess. Regardless, I headed further east, planning to stop at every hardwood hammock I came across. But the next morning, I realized that I needed water to heal up. And the good news is that I spotted a river nearby. But the bad news is what was at the river. Yeah, I almost stepped on a rather dangerous invasive species in the Everglades. See, Nile monitors, much like the Burmese pythons, were released into the Everglades after being kept as pets. So yeah, while it's not these guys' faults, they are still causing a lot of damage to Florida's native wildlife. Opting to keep my distance from them, I continued down the river. But that night, I was once again reminded not to let my guard down. 
On day 72, I continued my search for the Florida Panther in this nearby hammock. But once again, nothing. Yeah, this was definitely a harder search than I thought it would be. And I couldn't help but wonder just how Luna was doing. Yeah, I'm a bit envious of her. Regardless, I ended up seeing something strange on day 73. It was a structure of some kind with glass. As I approached the structure, it became clear that I was looking at a plane, and an old one at that. In 1945, a collection of five U.S. torpedo bombers took to the skies from Fort Lauderdale, carrying 14 men on what would normally be a routine training flight over the Atlantic. However, a little over an hour after takeoff, the squadron commander reported that they were lost, and after a few more hours had passed, none of the 14 men were ever heard from again. What ensued was one of the largest air and sea recovery searches to this day, including the Everglades. Yet nothing was ever found. Now, this is a very real mystery that has sparked many theories, but most notably, this was the event that defines the infamous Bermuda Triangle. Inside the plane were some paintings in this canteen. Oh, and a lot of Spanish moss. However, I had a search to continue. So I rode my way through this river that evening, only to see something along it the next morning. Oh? What is that? As I approached this large building, I saw more structures in the distance and realized that it was a village. So I decided to head there first. I ended up finding the normal loot, like food and lanterns. Oh, and I wanted more iron, so I had to sacrifice this iron golem. Next morning, I figured that it was time to take a look at this creepy mansion. I entered the first floor and was met with a lot of honey, which I thought was odd, but I collected it anyways. I then went outside the house and climbed up the exterior. And yeah, there were definitely more mobs on the second floor. And at least the loot was also better. However, the witches were getting me really low. And I realized that I was out of water. So I had to leave in order to refill my canteen. But on day 76, I gave the house one more shot. Only this time, I was able to climb up to the top of it really easily. And the loot at the top was fine. But now it was really time for me to find a Florida Panther. No more side quests or distractions. So with that, I entered yet another hammock nearby. Only to be disappointed yet again. Yeah, I was starting to go crazy here. But finally, on the afternoon of day 77, I explored this other hammock, and this happened. Well, let's go treetop. Never mind, is that one? Oh, wait, wait there, yeah, there, there's one, there's one. There's another, okay. I had not only found one, but at least three. Yeah, I cannot express how relieved I was to have finally found them. And with that, we have a very important segment to cover. Hardwood hammocks are one of the many habitats that you can find in the Florida Everglades. And while they might have a tropical atmosphere, they are also one of the best places to cool off in, due to the shade that they provide. Uh, this also makes it a suitable environment for the extremely elusive Florida Panther. The Florida Panther is a subspecies of mountain lion, and is the only type of mountain lion found east of the Mississippi River, and they are one of the most endangered mammals in the United States. Hunting and habitat loss nearly caused them to go extinct, as when they were first listed as an endangered species in 1967, it was estimated that up to 20 of them still existed. I don't need to tell you just how shocking that number is, but I can tell you that since then, their population has been growing. And even though it may be growing slowly, it's estimated today that just over 200 of them now roam the wild, almost exclusively in the Big Cypress National Preserve and the Everglades. So, in other words, progress is being made, and it was even named the Florida State Animal in 1982. The next day, I started my journey home. Only I seemed to have aggravated this rattlesnake, so I approached it with my shield up, ready for it to lunge.
Okay, it bites through the shield. It bites through the shield. It bites through the shield. Yeah, this was not good. I quickly towered up, but soon realized that I had no water to heal with. Seeing that I had lost the snake, I carefully lowered myself down before heading towards the forest, where there were lots of berry bushes. I had to be extremely careful, as I'm not about to die on day 78. Yeah, I need to find water as soon as possible. But even as the next day rolled around, I had no luck. I walked through the forest and marshes very slowly, but finally, that evening, I saw water in the distance. Mobs were starting to spawn though, so I had to make it there fast. And that's when I heard something. Yeah, this was terrible timing. I frantically ran through the bushes and spiders as more explosions went off around me. I reached the water and rode away as the skunk ape disappeared from sight. So I found a spot to stop at and began healing up. Only I had forgotten about one more thing. I had to use my flamingo float to escape again, but as I dropped back into the water, I saw that there were lots of them around me. But after finally getting to sleep, I crafted a new boat the next morning and continued my travels home. Thankfully, nothing happened on this day other than a lot of healing and traveling. And the same can be said for day 81, as I did a lot of rowing and walking through the forest. However, my thirst was once again depleting, so when I spotted a pond the next evening, I went to get water from it, and had this gator charge at me, but that was nothing compared to the pond itself. Yeah, needless to say, I didn't get water this evening, No, it wasn't until the next morning that I approached this other waterway, and this witch chased me the entire time, so that was fun. Either way, I drank some water just in time to realize that I had been going the wrong way for the last two days. I really have no one to blame but myself here, yeah. So my trip home took a while, but while I make my way back, I'll go ahead and rate the difficulty of the Everglades. The Everglades had all of the animals I expected to see, and some I didn't expect to see. And mythical creatures aside, I had to deal with a lot of scaly predators that reduced me to half a heart many times. Yeah, this one was not easy at all, so I give the Everglades a daunting 9 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. I reached Anhinga right at dusk, and had time to look around the main building once more, before heading to my base the next day, where I would be finishing it up in time for base review. So with that being said, let's get to work one last time. I added the Spanish moss to my bridge, and then broke an excruciating amount of gravel in order to get flint, which I used to light all of the candles. The next day, I went to get some dark oak fence, and got hit by this gator on the way back. So I tried to lead it into this wandering trader that had appeared, but to no avail. So I went and made my balconies, before finally fixing the bridge. And on day 93, I got to work on Luna's room. I went ahead and redid this bottom floor by taking all the wood out and filling it with water and dirt. Also placed some grass, and Luna seemed to like it. So the next morning I moved on to my next project, which was to add a widow's walk to the top of this house. But that meant I would have to go and get some mangrove wood, so down the Taylor Slough I rode. I made it there early evening and collected some wood. I then made it back home the next day, and finished the walk right at sunset. And no, it was not worth that mini trip. Regardless, I worked on adding all of my Halloween decorations on day 96, and yeah, I had a lot at this point, including these skulls. I also worked on the upstairs of this cabin, but it was on day 97 that I focused on my room entirely. And I tried to make it look nice with this mossy roof and these mangrove slabs, but it's just kind of... Nah. Finally though, the last day of base work had arrived, where I placed this painting of Fort George Island by Thomas Moran, and did my final decorations. Which brings me to day 99. I woke up and took a look around each room, before giving a final verdict. 
starting with the workshop cabin. This cabin has a really nice vibe to the interior. I like the netting a lot. And it's my first base to have a guest bedroom. The exterior is just fine though, nothing crazy. As for my main cabin, I do love Luna's room. It's Halloween themed, but she definitely loves it as well. I also like this miscellaneous witch themed room. Yeah, it's pretty consistently themed. But my room, on the other hand, is a bit basic. Yeah, a bit dull. I do like the exterior of this cabin a lot more though. Finally though, the bridge. Which by now has definitely grown on me. It looks a lot better with the changes I made, and I'm quite happy with it. So with all of that in mind, I give this base a 7.5 out of 10. But there is still one more day. I woke up on day 100 and said hi to Luna one last time, before rowing out into the Everglades to take a final look around. See, the Everglades National Park is both massive and diverse, with endless sights to see and animals to encounter. It has mangroves, swamps, pinelands, tropical forests, and marshes, and it's the only place in the world where alligators and crocodiles coexist in the wild. Yeah, it is just an anomaly, but don't take my word for it. Go and see it for yourself. And with that being said, it is about that time. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.